Morning, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. A foggy morning in St. Albans, if you happen to be watching us live, but thank you for joining us and welcome to St. Albans Mayor Tim Smith. Hello, Richard. And Brendan Diso, the Select Board Chairman in St. Albans Stan. Thanks, folks. Good to, good to see you for our bi-weekly for the record St. Albans Today show. Uh, Brendan, let's start with you. Boy, the election we're down to mercifully, uh, what, another 20 days. See if we yep. can hang in for another 20 days. But of course, uh, a local issue in St. Albans Town, which we've been talking about a couple of issues related to the proposed new town hall. Mm -hmm. You're getting the sense a lot of people have already voted out there? I, I am, yeah. I think uh, I think a lot of people have cast their vote. You know, the town clerk's office has been inundated with ballots. Really? Um, Anna's been coming in on weekends. You know, kudos to her and Lisa oh. and all the volunteers have worked in the elections. Uh, you know, we, uh, we're going to start communicating a little bit more heavily. We had an open house um, last Wednesday. Only one person attended, but we had it. Um, if anybody would like to come and take a tour of the existing town hall and talk with a staff member about why we're proposing this, all you have to do is call the town clerk's office, 524-2415. Um, you give Anna a call. She'll set up an appointment for you. You come on in. You take a tour. You know, enter the basement at your own peril. Um, <laughs> that that basement is not so. I've never, I've never been down in the basement of the town hall. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, and, not missing too much. Well, we got a video coming out later this week. Uh, <laughs> Anna took um, one of the videographers from Northwest Access, who's also Alan Mashtier's son, Mason. Um, he no, went. Really. To, he's working on helping us with a two-minute explanatory oh. video, and uh, Anna gave him a guided tour. My grandfather actually went. Um, to the early part of grade school in that building. Really? And uh, so he, w he had happened to be walking through my office when I was meeting with Mason going over this video. And I said, come here, we'll see what it looks And he looks at it and he goes, well, that basement looks about the same. It's still the dungeon bathrooms. Goes, so, um, so the open house for people who want to get a look at the town hall and why yeah. you folks think that you definitely need another one. Yeah, we're having an open house by appointment from now to election day is the way that it's going to go. You know, we had the timed one, but, you know, we only got one person who showed up. It happened to be the owner of Bayside and the co-owner of the marina, so it was a very worthwhile um, chance to be able to, to speak with somebody who's got a, a large investment hmm. and a large stake in the Bay Area. How did the marina fare this summer? He said he had 80 slips. 80 really? slips, and he probably would have been closer to 100 if he could have had his Canadian traffic. Of course, he lost, obviously lost all his can, yep. know, Canadian traffic. So we, uh, you know, Chuck's got a, 156 slips. And um, you know he's, half, huh? yeah, he's been steadily going. You know, the first year I think he did, he said he did around 20 or 30, and mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a heart attack moment for he, he and he and his partner, and they've gone up every year ever since. Um, and this was the first summer that I had reason to spend some time in the marina. I knew a couple people who had their boats there for the first year, mm -hmm. and uh, every time I went there, it was like. It was like uh, checking out a reality and going on vacation. You just it, it, it inspires you to want to become a boater to visit that place. It's uh, Brendan, it, you mentioned going to school, and I'm, I'm kind of spacing out here. What, what's going on with the old St. Albans Bay School? I haven't even thought of that for some years. It's Project SOAR. <coughs> it's, Project uh, SOAR has been there for a while. Yeah, <coughs> and they, I don't think they have any intent of moving anytime soon. So again, two uh, two issues on the November 3rd ballot in the town relating to the town hall. Do um, voters ask being asked to if they'd authorize spending up to $200,000 to buy property for it and then for some what pre-development costs associated so with it? The full explanation is there's five plus <coughs> acres in the Bay Area just outside of the new village center designation, which was approved by the state late last month. Mm. Um, so we do have an approved village center for the Bay Area. So there's five acres that's across Wharf Street from the, exist, the, uh, the previous location of the Public Works Department. Um, we had an environmental site analysis done on that property, the old, uh, the old garage property, and we've got only maybe six employees worth of septic capacity on that land. Mm -hmm. So it's not a future site that we could use for something like a municipal building. So we're going to turn our attention to trying to turn it into a boat launch or at least another parklet with maybe a canoe and kayak access for now. But we're going to try to cre create some type of a public use for it. And um, this land that you know we've negotiated for 200000 it's a little over five acres. It's got a, an existing wastewater <coughs> permit that we plan to amend to give the town even more capacity. Um, and it'd be a great, a great home to a building that we've designed already. And it's, uh, it's 13,000 square feet, single level. It looks like the stone house in Bay Park. 
and a, and a rustic train station had a baby, and it, that baby became the town hall. It's a gorgeous building. If anybody wants to see a rendering, call 524-2415. We'll email it to you. And um, the $200,000 in pre-development money, this is us recognizing a mistake that the select board had made with the garage project, the new public works facilities on Brigham Road. We had spent about you know, over $150,000 of general fund dollars to generate a proposal for a new public works facility. And we had planned the whole time to reimburse those monies from the infrastructure development fund, which is the local option tax revenue. Um, and if the voters had failed, that project, which they had one time previously, you know, two or three years prior, mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't have had the ability to reimburse the general fund. We would have been $150,000 short. So this time around, we're asking permission to tap that money before we, before we start spending any money. We don't want to leverage general fund property tax dollars to do an infrastructure project ever again. It's, uh, you know, we're just going to ask, we're going to ask permission to open the cookie jar before we go grab the cookie. That's the. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I don't think it'll cost $200,000, but we wanted a healthy budget to be able to do whatever we needed to do to be able to generate a rock solid proposal for uh, March 2021. Town meeting day, we'll be back with a build package. If I had to put a rough number on it, it'll probably be somewhere between two and a half and three and a half million, anywhere in that ballpark. Um, but that'll buy a, a 75 year building. You know, we've, we've, uh, we're gonna essentially go from operating out of you know, right around, I think we're using around 6,500 square feet. We'll have 13,000 square feet in this new building. Um, there's a lot of little meeting spaces programmed into the floor plan that can be converted into office space for new employees as the town grows into the future. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll be a beautiful site for it. And it's, uh, it's part of our multi-pronged approach to revitalize the bay, which was get the village center designation done, build a new town hall, working on it, find a reasonable solution for the old town hall. We'll start on that process soon. Um, apply for, for grants to increase connectivity for pedestrians. You know, we've got a sidewalk network within the Bay Park that's being used heavily. Um, Chuck Lowe has invested money in the marina project to put in a beautiful paver sidewalk um, in, in that neck of the woods. We need to connect all that together. Mm. Um, ideally, we'd like people to be able to park at the town hall and walk all the way to Bay Park. Um, and then after that, we need to uh, we need to train our staff into uh, being well aware of what this new village center designation means and what uh, what resources it opens up for us. And then we need to start communicating those resources to business owners like Chuck, the bay store, the bait shop, and uh, we need to start doing some projects to continue to revitalize the bay area. Flip over to the city and Tim again. No local issues in St. Albans City on November third, but. Getting a fair amount of people voting already. Is that a hearing much talk about early voting? It appears to be. Uh, the, obviously, the ballots were mailed last week or the week before, yeah. and um, we had a brief discussion on that at the council meeting on Monday. Um, I was, um, I guess, expressed a little concern that uh, coming to our house was a ballot that um, was a young woman who rented from me when my house was a duplex 15 years ago. Is that right? She got a, she got a ballot. She got a ballot. Wow. And um, I've since returned it back to the town clerk, or city clerk, excuse me. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, we talked about what, are, what measures are in place to prevent bills <coughs> from just being filled out and, and dropped off. You know? yeah. And uh, cur our city clerk was not at our meeting, so, but it's a conversation I still have to reach out and have with her. Um, you know, I, I think they do their best job possible to purge the the voting list, but this is one that has slipped through, and I'm sure there's others as well. But. Interesting. Downtown project, a CCV, not too yeah, far away from too far. downtown. Um, you know, they're taking applications on the apartment house behind the, the main and Congress building. Um, so there's two apartment buildings. One is still under construction. One is pretty close to being completed. Um, and that's the one being run by the Champlain Housing, right. and um, so they're they're making headway there. Uh, the the Main Street project is um, has come along beautifully. It appears that they're still waiting on some windows to to install and um, and moving forward on other 
uh, on the majority of it. So CCV, I think, is hoping to move in in December. Really? Yeah. So hopefully by the end of the year is what it looks like? Yeah. yeah. I, think the, I think the buildings look great. Um, you know, I think um, Main Lane is going to look great when it's done as well. Hmm. Um, it will be a huge, huge addition to the downtown. Well, what, a, what a new look for the heart of downtown St. Yeah. Albans, huh? Yeah. And work on the, on the current CCV building uh, for the uh, future police headquarters. Just Let's started start. meeting on it, uh, architect, mm -hmm. uh, engineer, and looking at uh, what the option and the police chief um, and checking out to see what uh, what the design is going to look like. But just just getting that underway. They had a meeting uh, last week on that. Yeah. So. And speaking of um, police, again, is there a, a formal search at this point? I think I've seen the I, ad in fact. Yeah, the for formal search has started. Uh, we've received four applications so far. Really? Um, more from outside, all, all from outside the area. Huh. Um, so, Any yeah. indication whether Morris Molamont, the act, acting chief, uh, will apply? Do you know? Uh, I have not asked him directly, but mm -hmm. uh, in discussion with city manager, I believe he is interested and will be applying. Yeah. And when do you when do you hope to make that decision? This fall sometime? Yeah, I think we, we allotted three months for the for the process. Yeah. Um, and it just, the yeah, ad went out uh, two weeks ago. So, um, you know, another Probably uh, for probably first of the year with the holidays when you take into consideration the holidays. So right. that's what we're looking at. Um, you know, we talked about the police. We had uh, Chief Lamont gave us a presentation about some a little bit of restructuring on the police, on the part of the police, uh -huh. um, taking the school resource officer and use, utilizing them because schools aren't open on Wednesday and utilizing them to. Um, do a little more community policing by reaching out to the homeless population mm -hmm. and underserved and trying to build those networks. Uh, they've had multiple conversations with NCSS and um, Department of Family, uh, Children and Families, and mm -hmm. so they're they're going to be making a uh, concerted effort to to connect with those populations and try to build relationships. And um, mm -hmm. you know they're going to. They're going to have a different uniform. It's, uh, it's going to be more dressed down than an official police. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, this goes to the whole marginalized communities and social justice. So it's, uh, it's an initiative that I'm excited about. I think it's going to be great for the city and great for the police department to mm -hmm. connect. And the with outside those. firm, Municipal Resources, Inc., have they... Um, you'll get a, like a final report from those folks. It's well, there, it's, it's an ongoing process. Oh, we God. we just uh, approved uh, an, an internal affairs policy where uh, oh. basically handling complaints on uh, if any complaints come in on any officer or oh. uh, situation. Um, so we just approved that. Um, that's something that we had not had in place before. So um, they're walking us through. Um, um, you know these situations and helping us yeah. uh, uh, develop our policies, and that was the intent from day one. Right. So I don't know that there's going to be an actual report. It's going to be more of a, um, you know, this is what you need to do, and we'll help you work, yeah. work through it. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah. So I think um, there's a lot of you know we we have we received I believe 13 applicants for our police advisory commission, really? of which seven will be placed. So we're uh -huh. uh, we're moving that forward as well. Um, so those are all, I, I, in my opinion, all good things that are happening within the police department. Uh -huh. um, you know, we had our meeting the other night. We had um, uh, Chief Lamont recognize <coughs> two of the officers for their uh, performance and. Uh, one uh, corporal cook was uh, helped out with uh, saving a one-year-old baby, <coughs> and then there's um, corporal Co Coke. Um, he was um, instrumental in talking someone off the top of the parking garage who was threatening really? to commit to, to jump. Yeah. Um, so both were recognized at our meeting, and you know that's the service that uh, they don't get enough recognition for, and we. Yeah. I think we have a great force in place right now. Brendan, I know I think you spoke to the city council a while back to send some possible kind of joint initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, city and town, and you mentioned off the air. So the council on rural development, which has had a 
presence in Franklin County and elsewhere. It looks like they're going to uh, give you folks some attention maybe a year or two down the road. Yeah, they have a backlog until 2022 is what we hear. But huh. um, the select board authorized me to sign a letter on behalf of the board to invite um, or to, to express interest in uh, having the program come to town. It's a community visit program. It was, it's been pretty successful for Swanton, Montgomery. Yeah. I think Rutland did it almost 10 years ago. Fairfield, I think they're another good Fairfield some attention yeah. too. So we, um, we recognize that the best way to start joint initiatives probably isn't one side or the other going to the other and with a list of demands or ideas. It's probably going to be best if we have a third party come to town, cultivate community members that are both involved in the municipalities and then not involved, um, get folks from the hospital, you know, NCSS, uh, business owners, you know, manufacturers, and get everybody in one room and let's start talking about what our priorities are as a singular community. And then also we can talk about what some priorities could be for ourselves separately. And um, you know, we could have a, a list of uh, priorities to work on. And then the Council on Rural Development will also help you get connected to the resources you need to be successful. So it's uh, basically, I think the city approved joining that initiative Monday night at their council meeting. They'll have their letter going to the, the Council on Rural Development soon. And um, you know, in our letter, I referenced that uh, we wanted to, we want to uh, participate and do this program with the city um, as a means of recognizing the fact that we have two municipalities, but a lot of people who live here view our community as one. I think that's really evident in um, a lot of the things we do. We share a rec department. And that, that works out beautifully. Um, the holiday extravaganza that's going to happen in Bay Park is going to be fantastic. It's like three events combined into one. There'll be the running of the bells. We're going to have um, some tractors that would have been in the tractor parade parked along the path to light the path for the oh, runners. Oh, cool. um, we're going to have Santa will be there. We're going to have some craft vendors. And then all those fireworks we didn't get to shoot off for Bay Day are going to go off that oh, night. Really? And this is uh, the Friday day after Thanksgiving, It is. It's going to be when Black Friday would have been. So we're trying to give oh. people you know, stuff to look forward to, and we're doing it together. You know, we partnered with the Rourke Media Group and Emerson Lynn in the city, and uh, our staff, our town manager, and our director of public works have been working really well um, with this working group. And this is going to be probably the best event that's ever happened in Bay Park, and I'm really looking forward to it. And it's just one example of what we can do if we get on the same page with an initiative. We can knock it out of the park. Sounds great. Uh, I just saw the ad for Running of the Bells in the Messenger, I think, yesterday, the day before. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to salvage a few things that COVID put on the put on the shelf and turn it into one really nice event for the for families in our community and uh, you know mark your calendars the day after Thanksgiving it's going to be a great event um, if you're a vendor and you'd like to maybe be included uh, call town hall five two four two four one five ask for John Montaigne's contact information he's our new park supervisor um, done a phenomenal job by the way I can't say how how well our parks have been received this summer. Yeah. I've had more lifetime area residents around your age, Richard, come to me and say, in my... That, that old, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're only 39, but they, you know, <laughs> so they, uh, they come and they say, you know, I've lived here for X number of years. I have never seen this park look so good. Yeah. Um, As I told you, I, I'm usually walking down there every, every two or three days or so, but uh, now you keep the park in very good shape. Well, we've got, we've got a new walking path that's being used. The, the, yeah. the dock's being used more than it ever has. The stone house is 80, almost ADA compliant. Um, the old green deck's gone. You know, we're doing. We've got exercise equipment right off the path. We've used grant money and volunteer hours to uh, rebuild a lot of the trail network in the town forest. We've got a fairly new pavilion at Cohen Park, and we're just we're just scratching the surface. But we're already seeing some really worthwhile results, and it's all due to our good volunteers, the Parks Committee. You know, Jessica Frost, Alan Mashter, John Monting. We you know, we couldn't do it without them. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> You want to jump in on yeah, I was, I was going to, uh, Brendan took the words out of my mouth. You know, I've been down there every weekend for girls softball. Mm -hmm. And um, the two fields down there are the best fields probably in the county. Great looking field. Great field and well maintained. They do yeah. a wonderful job with them. Uh, one of the issues early on was that the uh, dugouts were um, all open front. Um, and so it was, it's, uh, it was a safety hazard. But over the last uh, three weeks, they rectified that by putting up uh, fen 
fence screening, I should oh, really? say, and, oh. and had a door on the end that, that uh, we have, I've talked to Alan last year about for a couple of years, and they oh. they were able to do it this year. And um, in discussion with other softball coaches, uh, we are going to push to have all the Little League games, all the oh. Little League softball games down in the Bay and use that as assuming we get permission from the town, but we will be pitching that come spring that uh, all practices and uh, games for 12 and under and 10 and under softball teams be held down at the bay. As opposed to at the Rotary uh, yeah, complex? A little bit. Some, usually it's been, uh, in the past, it's been at Barlow, it's been at the Rotary mm -hmm. Field. Um, some some have been at the bay, but not consistently. So hmm. um, that's a conversation we'll have in the spring or before, hmm. just to try to. Uh, and and I think it adds a lot when those teams are down there. Um, you know, the creamy stands packed afterwards. Um, uh, hmm. it's, just, it's just when you see that activity driving by, it just hmm. it just speaks volumes. Yep. Down to under four minutes. Um, quickly back to school. How do you think? I was just such a huge issue with the COVID. I mean, How do you think that's been going? I, I think it's going okay. I okay. mean, I say okay only because I'd like to get to four or five days with my kids. I and mean, they're getting what, two days in school two now. Two days. Still? Yeah. Um, Any hearing made that increase? Any no definitely? Yeah, I mean, my fourth grader is going to go four days a week starting no, really. November 12th. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. I think uh, they're going to see how that goes before they expand that for the seventh and eighth, uh, fifth through eighth grade. Huh. Um, you know, four days would be great for, I mean, yeah. our family in terms of sure. trying to manage it. Um, so it's been. Um, my two oldest are ones in six and eight. And they want to go back. And they want to. Yeah. They, they want to go back at least four days a week, if yeah. not five. The younger one maybe not so much, but um, you know it's tough. Um, it's tough to keep them occupied yeah. and focused on schoolwork during those Wednesday, Thursday, Friday days. Yeah. Um, I usually take a half day on Friday and we go do a field trip of some yeah. sort, um, yeah. but. You know, I'm I'm hoping we get even even a one more day would be a big help from yeah. a from a family perspective. Sure. Uh, just a couple minutes left, Brendan. Anything you want to quickly touch on? We haven't talked about. That? Yeah, we had our first budget meeting for this upcoming budget cycle Monday night, and mm -hmm. um, we knew that through the facilitating the process to obtain a new police servicing provider, that our contract was going to increase about three hundred fifty thousand. From this year, what we're paying SAPD to what we'll have to pay the sheriff's office starting July 1. Yeah. So we knew that our budget would be up a minimum of 350,000, not counting raises, health insurance increases, unemployment insurance, and what have you. Yeah. Um, so we asked our staff. You know, Stan Dukas and I have been making subtle hints since uh, since August to say level fund level fund and you know what if you take that one line item the yeah. policing services out of our budget our departments have produced a budget that's up a total of forty six hundred dollars mm. on five million bucks they have level funded to the point where that budget is up less than <clears throat> one tenth of a percent mm. we've also through good financial stewardship we're going to have a larger fund balance than we had last year to be able to use you know every year we ask that question shall the voters allow mm. us to use x amount of dollars to reduce yeah. taxes last year we used a hundred thousand this year we be able to use about 250 so that'll go to offset some of that $350,000 cost increase so right now we're looking like our taxes our tax rate will probably be up in the neighborhood of two cents per hundred which given the, the uncertainty in the world we're we're pretty happy Tim city finances have you got a again we're about what seven Just months into the same. pandemic same, just getting started. Yeah. Um, for the next for fiscal twenty twenty two, I guess. Right. Exactly. Um, the local option tax uh, was starting on October one, so we don't know what the impacts of that will be for but a while. But that did that did kick in October first. It did, yeah. Um, huh. Not not with a whole lot of education from the tax department. We're yeah, you mentioned that before. I'm so disappointed kind of by that. A little disappointing. You expected just a lot more information yeah. that they would throw out. Yeah, other than one one mailing. Really? So, you uh, think they would? They get thirty percent of every dollar. <laughs> How did you? Did you get a lot of information, Brendan? Was that before your? That was before my time. time. That was twenty fourteen. Uh, well, well before. So anyway, but it is is in effect. So people, if they pay close attention to some bills, will notice bills going up a little right. a little bit. Yes. Yep. Interesting. Um, you mentioned you mentioned just all the activity at the Bay Park. What about the the uh, 
the, the dock itself. There was some talk about maybe raising it. Raising it. Where, where does that stand? So 2017, that summer, we spent about $27,000, and I was a little critical of it at the time, to, uh, to have an engineering firm come in and tell us exactly where that dock was, the history of it, how it, mm. how it became built the way that it is. Mm. Um, it was a great report, thorough. You know, we knew how many, uh, you know, we, we know everything that we need to know about that dock. We also know that it's going to cost a, over a million dollars to raise it two feet. Is that right? Yeah. Really? So we decided with everything else that we need to go and fix in town, that yeah. we're going to try to spend a few thousand to, to sl slightly renovate and revamp it and make it more user-friendly for the months that it's available and then mm. it's out of the water. And I that, walked there uh, just a couple, three days ago, and it sure looked like a surve surveyor. Was that a... Is that some ongoing work? It sure looked like somebody was kind of down at the far end and surveying backer. You know, I didn't see any any official um, company name on this guy's jacket, but he was definitely surveying. And very possible. We're always looking to do something down there. You yeah. know, we're talking with we were talking with Vtrans and AOT about taking over Lake Road all the way to Black Bridge from where the the city's Class One mm -hmm. Highway and Lake Street ends. Yeah. Um, they would give us about. Thirteen thousand dollars a year per mile for maintenance, and they would pave. Uh, we're looking to have them pave it every fifteen years, and in exchange for that, we, we'll plow it. And uh, um, but we've we've told them, and they've been pretty amenable, at least at a face value, of saying that they would take care of any stormwater per issues that the road might have before the transfer, and that they'd also pay to reconstruct that intersection and turn it into a four-way stop. And that would have to include adding parking for the creamy stand to That's solve that cool. issue. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to leverage partnerships with the state to uh, to uh, revamp the bay. That started with the, the village center designation. We're looking to roll that over into uh, taking over Route 36 as a Class 1 town highway after the state does some improvements and makes some agreements with us. But you know that'll be something that'll come right when the probably next cycle when the legislature gets back in session. Can do a couple couple minutes here. Uh, Tim mentioned before truck traffic on Upper Weldon Street. Is that still an issue? You're still running into some trucks uh, on streets that, that if should we are, be. If we are, I'm not hearing much about it. Yeah. Uh, we've done our best uh, along with the town to to limit that activity. Yeah. Uh, I think we have been able to impact it. Um, the uh, the major factor in that was the GPS systems right. that truckers had used. Um, and we did some outreach to those companies and asked them. I think that helped. Um, what we're seeing now, the issue we discussed last uh, Monday night at our meeting was uh, that intersection of Federal, Catherine Street, and Market Street. Um, <clears throat> trucks come up Lake, uh, Lake Street, and they either try to turn onto Catherine, where the old Juru furniture building was, right. and clip, they usually clip something, or they try to take the turn up on Main, south, on Main Street heading south, and that's, that doesn't work out well either. Right. So we're, we're going to be putting up some new signage and directing trucks over Catherine Street the best we can. Um, Catherine Street's wide enough, Stebbins is wide enough, um, and hopefully that will alleviate some of the issues with trucks trying to turn at the top of Lake onto Main Street. So uh, we're, we're, to your point, we've refocused our uh, energies more towards that intersection than uh, Upper Weldon. Uh, you st I think we still have them on Upper Weldon, but not to the level that we had in the past. Yeah, I noticed the tractor trailer always happens. Got hung up in Smuggler's Notch in the yeah, Notch yeah. the other day. A couple so times last week. Un unbelievable. That's going to hey. just about do it for a time, gentlemen. Brenda Diso, the St. Albans Town Select Board Chairman. Brenda, I'm sure you're encouraging folks to uh, keep voting. You have a local issue coming up on November 3rd. Absolutely. And Tim Smith, the St. Albans Mayor, thanks, folks, for the time. Sure, sure. Hope to see you two weeks hence. Our next show would be uh, Wednesday, October 28th, so hopefully we'll see everybody there or then. And thanks to Roger Lindelar, our producer, our key guy. I'm Richard Calverthwaite. See you next time.